Hi, I'm Franco Luna Puma Podcast. You're listening to Teka Teka News. Balitang thinking, hindi breaking. In this episode, Marami po kasi natatakot na baka sabi ho nila, with the shortage, baka bumalik po sa mano-mano na bayaran. Actually, hindi po mangyayari yun kasi available pa naman po. Napakarami po tayo ng supply ng single journey ticket. So, easily po yung mga pasahero natin, just in case maubusan po sila ng stored value ticket, pwede po sila mag-avail ng single journey ticket po. We talk about the beep card shortage that has commuters up in arms. Based on sa report na nakuha ko, for line 1, they were able to deliver no, yung for the fourth quarter is 34,500. Meron pa silang balance na 48,000. And then for MRT3, they were able to deliver Uh, 70,500, meron pa silang balance for uh, the last quarter of 2022 na 59,000. Fully delivered na sila ng kanilang commitment for line 2. You just heard attorney Hernando Cabrera over One News The Big Story. He's the administrator of the Light Rail Transit Authority, which operates the LRT2 line in Manila and Quezon City. The shortage has actually been a long time coming. It started with a missed order. Beep card operator AF Payments, which is owned by the Ayala and the First Pacific Groups, admitted back in August that it wouldn't be able to deliver the 75,000 cards needed by the MRT3. But today, it's gotten to the point where whole MRT3 stations along EDSA are running out of stored value cards. Things like the Ukraine-Russia conflict, COVID-19 disruptions in major manufacturing hubs, and higher shipping costs haven't made things any easier. Here's the LRTA's Hernando Cabrera again. This time before the Senate Committee on Finance in September. The last time po na nakipag-discussion po kami sa AFPI, ito po yung provider po natin. Ang issue po talaga is yung supply po worldwide ng uh, microchip. So yun po yung problema. Wala po problema doon sa plastic part kasi marami po tayong supply yan. Ang problema lang po is yung uh, worldwide supply po ng uh, microchip. Worldwide din parang dalawa na lang po yung manufacturer po nito. And then this is uh, something parang proprietary. So isang company din lang po ang may hawak po ng technology. But nonetheless po, ang kanila pong uh, ginagawa at the moment is that they are trying to source out yung mga ibang suppliers dito sa Asia. It makes sense, but the kicker is that the same beep cards cost much more on AFPI's official online stores in Lazada and Shopee. They're priced at 188 pesos each and don't come with any credit. As in, you have to top up pa. At train stations, they only set you back 100 pesos with 70 pesos already loaded. To make matters worse, commuter groups say scalpers have also begun taking advantage of it on social media. There are also reports of fake cards without chips circulating the market. As if commuters don't have enough to deal with, diba? Right? And for these cards, you can't buy tickets in advance. And every single journey ticket can only be used within two hours. It's a good sign if people would shift to be card use kasi talagang ibig sabihin nagiging more efficient ang ating mga pila, di ba? And then kung for example, eh, mahaba pa rin ang pila, then hindi na siya dun sa pila sa pagbili ng ticket. Humahaba yung pila because of the shortage because may mga would prefer to use the beep but there's no more uh, beep card na available. On the part of commuters, I would think, itong additional na hassle, of course, ng mahabang pila, matagal na pagbiyahe because of the shortage is uh, an issue. Yan si Toik Serna, spokesperson for the commuter advocacy group Commute. In a statement sent to reporters, AF Payment said the cards sold at stations were cheaper because they're subsidized by AFPI and the government under their 2016 concession agreement. Listen to Randolph Klett in an interview over One News Now. He's project manager of the DOTR Automated Fare Collection System. The yeah. issue now is some of our uh, fellow are selling these beef cards at higher prices, but we are not guaranteeing that these are the same quality because most of the cards that are being sold outside are coming from the hands of the persons who are using it before. So these are not really legitimate sources. AF Payments also claimed that doesn't profit from its beep cards. Just this year, it doubled its subsidies for cards to 24 million pesos. That amount was expected to go up to 74 million pesos by next year. From AFPI, they said that 99% of their allocation is given to our rail concessionaires. So 99% is allocated to LRT1, LRT2, and MRT3. But they are not barred to supply that remaining 1%. 
So they are non-real concessionaires. So 1% goes outside the concession agreement. We're pausing for a quick break now when we return more on the beep card shortage. Beyond the card shortages, experts say we still have a long way to go in modernizing fare collection across public transport. Listen to transport economist Robert C. He is co-convener of the Move is One Transport Coalition. The sad thing is, more than six years went by from the time the beep card was launched until today. So much could have been done to expand cashless fare collection during that period if it was given priority. My hope was that we could have rolled out a much wider expansion of automatic fare collection nationally if we had put in place the right policies such as national standards for interoperable fare media. Public transportation has been doing cashless fare collection for a while now, but interoperability hasn't quite left the terminal just yet. Right now, the options are limited to say the least. The Beep ecosystem, after all, also covers buses, modernized jeepneys, and ferries. Just a few companies use Tripco cards, while other companies like Green Frog Transport have proprietary cards for their buses only. Thankfully, the LRT2's private management says they've already completed testing for a QR code payment system. Here's LRTA spokesperson Hernando Cabrera again. We're looking at now yung tinatawag natin na QR code uh, ticketing system. Itong ating uh, concessioner natapos na nila yung pilot testing sa lahat ng linya, MRT3, Line 1, at saka Line 2. We're now looking doon sa contract side kasi uh, we have to amend, we have to make some revision doon sa kanilang existing contract to accommodate itong bagong medium. Doon kasi sa existing contract natin, ang medium doon is yung card. Hindi kasama doon yung other medium. So we have to make some uh, adjustment doon sa kontrata. Teka, teka. Bago matapos yung episode, may request kami sa inyo. Hi, I'm Mark from the Puma Podcast audio team. If you've enjoyed listening to Puma Podcast, maybe you've thought, how can I support them? Now, all you have to do is go to pumapodcast.com. You'll find a link there to our Puma Patak Jar. Give whatever you can. Salamat and Merry Christmas. At the Senate hearing on the DOTR's budget in September, Cabrera also said that many commuters keep more than one stored value card on hand. Their solution? He said the LRTA was looking into getting them to share more. The DOTR's Randolph Klett also says other forms of payment are on the way. The operators are really uh, trying hard on how they can mechanize some of their uh, personnel to reduce the queue. But in the long run, uh, we will be launching our national standards for automatic fare collection. For we will be opening our doors to other fair media technology. What do we mean? By that time, the other fair technology, like uh, your bank cards that are EMV contactless, QR code, NFC uh, on your mobile phones can be used for transportation payment. Here's Toy Xerna again, spokesperson for commuter advocacy group Commute. Ang importante sigurong silipin din dito, yung open contracts. Ano ba talaga yung agreement between the provider and the OTR? I don't know eh. Parang monopoly siya, di ba? Wala pang other providers. Maganda nga sana kung meron ng other providers para mas maraming options yung commuters. More options would mean more competition and better deals for commuters. And that was today's episode of Teka Teka. Again, I'm Franco Luna. This episode was edited by Nina Toralba and produced by Kat Ventura. If you like this episode, share it with a friend or two. And of course, don't forget to follow Teka Teka and Puma Podcast wherever you listen. At para sa mga mahilig manood sa YouTube, Puma Podcast na rin po kami doon. Just search Puma Podcast and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for listening. <laughs>